At any given moment, millions of containers are in transport around the globe. International trade is the most profitable industry in the world, representing hundreds of trillions of dollars a year. The invention of the container has made it possible to enjoy goods imported from distant corners of the globe. Unfortunately, there's a dark side. They can be used for the illegal smuggling of contraband and people. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, partnering with the international trade community, defeats their efforts with well-trained officers and agents armed with state-of-the-art technology. There is now a bigger threat we guard against, that one of these containers could be used to transport a terrorist or a terrorist weapon. For the same reason the container revolutionized international trade, it poses a serious risk to global security. Containers go seamlessly from ship to truck to train, making transport to and from almost anywhere achievable. Deep into our homelands and crowded cities, should an incident occur, lives lost could be in the thousands and the damage to the economy in the billions of dollars. U.S. Customs and Border Protection's priority mission is to keep terrorists and terrorist weapons from entering the United States. All containers coming into our country are screened through CBP's layered enforcement strategy. The vast majority of containers come from legitimate shippers, but even legitimate containers can be used for nefarious purposes. This is referred to as a ripoff load. Conventional ripoff loads usually involve narcotics. However, CBP's bigger concern is terrorism. The better the reputation of the importer, the more desirable that container is to the smuggler. Every container is suspect. Most of the tens of thousands of containers entering our ports every day are locked with one of these. Seals are one way Customs and Border Protection guards against smuggling and the more urgent threat from terrorists. These seals are the best indicators if a shipment has been tampered with anywhere along the way. I'm Will Rosser and we're here with Ray Pardo at the second largest seaport in the U.S. in Newark, New Jersey. Welcome, Ray. Thank you. Ray's going to show us the tools and techniques CBP uses to inspect seals and containers. Now, Ray, you're considered an expert detecting evidence of tampering. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for 22 years, and in those 22 years, I've seen quite a variety of smuggling techniques. So you've learned to think like a smuggler, but now you're learning to think like a terrorist. Uh, that's correct. You have to focus on the fine details because that's what's going to give you the clues. And also, you have to be able to utilize all the tools and technology available. So tell us about the way CBP prevents illegal shipments from entering the U.S. We use a layered enforcement strategy. The first part of that strategy is to pre-screen all manifest data to target your high-risk shipments. Another important part is the inspection of the seals and the container door locking hardware. So it's the seals that are especially effective at detecting the ripoff loads. Your seals and your locking hardware is your best way of detecting a ripoff load. And we're going to show you different types of seals, the parts of the seals, how they're counterfeited, how they're compromised. And we're also going to show you the locking hardware and how that is compromised. Let's go to it. Okay. This here is our tool truck. And we have a table set up here with some seals on it and some tools that we use for inspecting the seals. All right, let's start with the seals. Okay. This here is a indicative type of seal just an indicator that somebody might have broken into a container. This doesn't provide much in the way of security. It has a unique number on it. It's would fasten around the hasp, be brought around the loop here and locked into place. Okay. This is our next level of seal here, which is here is a cable seal. That's a more robust cable here that loops around the hasp and again, threads through the top here, cinched up tight and locks to the container. Uh, these are just different styles of the same cable seal. This is a larger cable seal here. The added advantage of this is that you can place this around the locking rods of the container, thereby sealing both doors of the container. Uh, this here is a handcuffing device that does the same thing as a larger cable seal, only it's a lot more robust. This has a unique seal number right here on this portion over here, and a seal number over here that is supposed to match. 
Uh, the other type of seal that we're going to look at is a bolt seal. Uh, the bolt seal is probably the most prolific seal out there, probably 70 to 80 percent of the industry. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's sealed. This is the two components that make it up. This is the pro bend. This is the locking body. The pro bend is inserted into the locking body. It hits a snap ring. When you push it together, it snaps and it locks. The snap ring is what marries or secures the pro bend to the locking body and it's basically a one-time locking device that once it's locked, while you will remove it is with a bolt cutters. Right, now let's talk about the basic tools you have here. The okay, first thing we have here is the bolt cutters. Uh, this bolt cutters is used to actually remove the seal from the container. You wouldn't ordinarily think of it as a tamper indicating tool, but if you cut a seal in a proper fashion, and we'll show you that in a second here, this actually can be a useful tool for a tamper indicator. Uh, that happens on these particular type of bolt seals here that are cut right along the casting mark here with a tubing cutter. And the reason why they're cut along the casting mark is that it'll separate the top of the seal, enabling you to pull the locking mechanism out. And once you have the mechanism out, you can access the snap ring and defeat the seal and then glue the seal back together again. Once it's glued back together again, this is what it'll look like. As you can see, you'd be hard pressed to tell whether it actually has been glued or it's actually a casting line on the seal. So what we do is we'll take the seal, and when we cut it with the bolt cutter, we will bite into the probe end and also into the locking body right at this point here. Uh, if this seal had been compromised, you could see that this one here was cut in that fashion. It crimps the top portion of the locking body. Uh, that would cause it to crack right along the seam here had it been glued. This did not crack along the seam, so we know it was not attacked in that fashion. It's a very good idea to have a known good sample, and this way you can pick, your eye can readily pick out the differences. So it's very important for officers to know what a good seal looks like so they can compare it with one that's been tampered with. Absolutely, when we go out in the field, we'll show you actually real world scenarios. Uh, one of the other tools that we have is a vice grip here. The vice grip pliers will be used to grab onto the bodies of seals or also on the container door locking hardware to twist and turn TIR rivets or bolts and seals and tug on them and make sure that they are indeed securely fastened. We also carry with us a multi-tool or a Leatherman that is a pair of pliers that you can basically do the same thing as the vice grip. You can grip, you can tug, you can pull and apply a little bit of force to that seal or locking hardware to make sure that they're indeed securely fastened. This is a five power magnifier. Uh, this is important for looking at the fine details to pick out a counterfeit seal. Uh, this here is a jeweler's loop. This is 10 powered. It illuminates, it has a light that turns on. So you can look at the fine details, again, to determine whether the seal has been compromised or counterfeit. Seals that are counterfeit versus compromised, what's the difference? A compromised seal is similar to the seal that we showed you before cut along the top. This is an original seal on the container that is disassembled and the locking mechanism is attacked so that the original seal is placed back on the container, but it has been attacked or opened. A counterfeit seal is similar to this seal over here where we show you two seals, the last digit ending in 02. The one on the top is the original seal. The one on the bottom, if you look close at the 02 on the end, that zero used to be an eight. The center of the number was eradicated, so now it looks like a zero two. So this is meant to be a reasonable facsimile of the original seal on the container, so it's a counterfeit. We've talked about the, the major types of seals here used on containers. Uh, the band seal, the stronger uh, cable seal, the handcuffing device, and the most common bolt seal. Then we talked about the four or five major types of tools you have your multi-tool in your pouch right here, uh, the bolt cutter, the stronger vice grip, but also the magnifying glass. Let's do some inspecting now and find out how CBP detects tampering. Okay, we'll head out to the field. 